Yo, what's good? It's a boy, do the views, and Harry spoilers for Demon Slayer Season 4, Episode 2, you have been warned. This episode adapted chapters 131 and 132. To avoid myself from getting future manga spoilers, I had to look up the chapter titles on the anime episode on Wiki. So special thanks to that. But without further ado, let's get on with this. The episode starts off with the Master of the Hashiras trying to ask Tanjiro to try and get through to Giyu. The first thing I thought when I looked at the Master of the Hashiras was that mate this guy is on death's door he so desperately wanted to talk to giyu but he just couldn't because of his poor health condition i do wonder why he's in this bad shape i do love how he asks tanjiro out of all the hashiras to try and talk to giyu not just because he's the main protagonist but that boy just has a way with words and he's able to get through to people even those that have a tough nut we then cut to what appears to be an anime original scene of tanjiro talking to miss io about how to try and get through to someone. I'm not gonna lie, this entire scene was very fillerish because when I briefly checked out the chapter that this episode was adapted from, Tanjiro does not have this interaction at all and it doesn't quite make any sense as to why Tanjiro needs to ask someone on how to talk and get through to someone else that has a cold exterior like Giyu. As Tanjiro is always seen to be this bright optimistic dude that just goes and talk to whoever he wants to talk to but at the same time it was a nice moment moment between the two teenagers and I do like how him receiving that food package from Lady Io was a way to get through to Giyu. We then cut to Giyu all alone in his house and my gosh Tanjiro is the definition of an introvert's nightmare. We find out that Giyu is quite mad that Tanjiro couldn't master water breathing but Tanjiro is like but why? We have you, Mr. Giyu. Giyu declares that he is not the water harshara and asks Tanjiro to leave, but Tanjiro is absolutely persistent in trying to get through to Giyu. While in the manga, we have three to four panels of montage scenes of Tanjiro trying to talk to Giyu, the anime actually expanded this entire sequence of events. We actually have a scene of Giyu actually eat and finish all those balls of rice, as well as other scenes like him sitting in a bath and Tanjiro nagging him like a little brother. But finally, Giyu has enough of everything and he's like okay I'm gonna tell you my past to get you off my back. I wasn't expecting him to quickly reveal his past just like that. I was expecting Tanjiro to go above and beyond the call of duty to try and get through to Giyu through the entire episode but no it only takes half an episode until Giyu finally reveals his past about Sabito the boy with the voice of Eren Yeager. When he was nothing more than a little wee young lad he and Sabito were nothing more than brothers as kids. However during a mission, Sabito protects Giyu from a demon and his life is cut short. Mate, I miss seeing those water breathing technique, animation, special effects sequences. It just looks so good, dude. While Giyu actually survived for seven days and actually passed the selection test, he didn't kill a single demon, so to him, it felt like he failed and feels like he is not a worthy Hashira. He feels nothing more than an imposter and believes that Sabito should have been the water breathing Hashira dude. And throughout this entire sequence of events, I'm just like you mate, you're just being way too hard on yourself dude. When he talks about how he feels like he should have died instead of Sabito, I do like the slight change from manga to anime. In the manga we have a scene of Giyu looking hella depressed, but the anime we just have a shot of the river flowing, symbolizing that ever since Sabito died, he's felt like he's just been drowning, sinking deeper and deeper into despair. A nice touch there, you affordable, a nice touch. Tanjiro then realizes why he was picked to try and talk to Giyu as the master of the Hashiras understands that Tanjiro went through a similar situation in the past how he lost the people he cared for but at the same time Tanjiro still has this bright optimistic view of the world unlike most of the Hashiras who are very pessimistic when it comes to the world Tanjiro is still optimistic and that's why this boy was picked to try and get through to Giyu I mean mate he and Giyu are very similar both had people in their lives that protected them both with bright colored hair Tanjiro then tells Giyu that isn't he going to continue to pass on what Sabito taught him. We then have a brief flashback of Sabito slapping Giyu. At first, I thought Giyu was being slapped by one of his parents. I thought, oh no, are we going to dive deep into Giyu's past? Is his past even darker than I imagined? But no, it's Sabito and he had every right to slap Giyu. Sabito does not want Giyu to waste his life away. The fact that his sister protected him, she wanted Giyu to move on and have a bright future and to help those that he sees in his life. Instead of being very pessimistic and wanted to die, she wanted Giyu to live a bright, happy
happy life. And I love how Sabuto was able to tell him all that and I think this was a slap in the face and a wake up call for Giyu. He is then reminded of a memory of him crying and breaking down after what happened to Sabuto, a memory he long forgot about. And we find out that, oh, this is why Giyu keeps a cold exterior. He doesn't want to be reminded of the painful past. Otherwise, he may break down once again. Damn, Demon Slayer and their tragic backstories. Tanjiro then thinks that he actually upset Giyu and tells him to join him in an eating contest. My gosh, this entire moment was so random, but I do feel like Giyu needed this. We then cut to Lady Shinobu, and we see that she's feeling really stressed out, but she's trying to keep a calm composure. I do remember in the flashback back in season one. She never always kept a calm composure. She was always true to her emotions and true to herself. If she was angry, then she'd be angry. But after her sister died. I do believe she wanted to keep her sister's memory by being like her, but in this scene we can clearly see that this is not good for her mental health and we can see her cracking. And I'm a little bit worried for this girl because if she keeps bottling up her true feelings about everything, this girl may truly explode. But the episode ends with her telling her disciple that she's going to tell her the truth about what truly happened to her sister and the demon that killed her and actually how to kill that specific demon. And that's it. Overall, I like the episode. Episode. I like how mellow and mundane it felt, but it did have a lot of heart and emotion, particularly with the flashback of Giyu. And for that, I'll give it a 7 out of 10, and I'll give it a B. What did you think of the episode? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Tell me. Like for more Demon Slayer reviews, as well as other anime videos, updates, and all that jazz. But thank you for watching, and as always, a boy do the view signing out.